How will we make it to Andromeda? That was the question that most fans were asking when Mass Effect Andromeda was announced. Now that the arcs have basically been confirmed, and the image of Ryder waking up in the latest EA Plays trailer, it looks like maybe we'll be seeing some cryostasis. Hi, this is Rima from Emmy Odyssey, and today I'll be looking at the science of cryostasis and how it's developed in the real world as well as in the fictional universe of Mass Effect. Cryostasis is defined as, quote, a frozen state of a person or body induced in order to preserve it for long periods. But it's very much defined by the reversible preservation of living tissue, i.e. being able to take them out of cryostasis without damaging them. Science fiction and cryostasis have always gone hand in hand, with images of Alien, 2001 Space Odyssey, and even Futurama showing the imagery of protagonists being frozen at ice. But in reality, freezing living tissue can cause significant damage to that tissue, making it nearly impossible for you to revive a person without killing them. As explained by the scientific study by A.P. Renfret in 1968 in regards to surgical procedures, as well as by Mazur in 1984, evidence shows that by freezing living tissue, ice crystals start to form within the intracellular spaces, i.e. the spaces between cells. As vapor pressure of the ice is lower than the liquid state within the cells, water is removed from the cells and within the intracellular space, causing ice crystals to grow and causing the cells to shrink, and then in turn getting crushed by the ice crystals. All the while, as the cells shrink, the water content keeps reducing, destroying the slightest cell mechanics such as protein formation. In short, freezing biological organisms is not reversible. Renfret discovered by using clathrate forming gases, cells can be protected against getting dehydrated by freezing. This would involve saturating the living tissue in clathrate forming gases, in specific atmospheric pressures and temperatures. Clathrate hydrates form cages of water molecules that can trap gas molecules. When exposing clathrate to some low molecular gases such as the noble gases like argon and xenon, clathrate hydrate will form and create cages between the spaces of these cells, preventing these ice crystals from forming and protecting the cells themselves. However, this isn't a viable way to cryogenically freeze someone so they can wake up later. In fact, there is no current way that we can do this to a living creature. So if you can't freeze someone, how else can you do it? Hibernation is a real-life natural mechanism that many animals use to protect themselves during harsh periods of winter when temperatures can be dangerously low and food can be very scarce. This is normally seen in non-primates like bears and rodents, but it is also shown in the dwarf lemur, a primate. Now there are three types of hibernation. Torpor, which is similar to what we've mentioned above. The metabolic rate and body temperature for an animal reduces to save energy. This can last from days to weeks depending on the species. Facultative hibernators is when there's a need that arises for the animal to hibernate, i.e. when they're starving or freezing, therefore the animal will hibernate to save energy. Obligative hibernators hibernate regardless of the atmospheric temperature. Now, unlike cryostasis, hibernation is a proven way of long-term energy saving in nature, and this might be why the NASA has funded several projects to look into hibernation for long-term spaceflight, and specifically in journeys towards Mars. And speaking of which... One of the most promising scientific studies funded by NASA is by Spaceworks Engineering, who are presenting a non-cryonic, i.e. nothing to do with freezing, way of transporting humans to Mars, specifically by inducing torpor hibernation. The research shows that certain animals can be in torpor hibernation for sometimes up to 8 months and that some animals can return to normal body functions fairly quickly after waking. And they even utilize nitrogen waste in their body protecting against muscle wasting, for example the black bear. So how would Spaceworks propose that we even achieve human torpor hibernation? Well, using therapeutic hyperthermia. Normally occurring when the body encounters drastically severe cold temperature, hypothermia is the body's way of conserving vital energy and heat, preserving a person who might be in a potentially life-threatening situation. Therapeutic hyperthermia has been studied in the medical field and used in different conditions such as cardiac arrest and brain damage. Spacework proposes by using therapeutic hyperthermia to lower a person's body temperature, they can reduce the person's metabolism to induce a torpor-like state. Though nowhere near as advanced as sci-fi, Cooling systems can be invasive, using cooling agents and catheterization, or non-invasive, like using the Rhino Cool system, and are designed not to use much power. 
For nutrients, they propose the crew would be fed using TPN, total parenteral nutrition, which involves a mixture of essential nutrients administered by IV. TPN is already widely used for patients who can't eat or digest in the medical field already. Facebook acknowledges that their project is far from being a perfect solution, as not only are the users at risk of DVTs, muscle wasting and infection, but also the risk of long-term travel, such as reduced bone density, but does suggest that there are fixes, such as a mixture of medicines and nutrients to keep the body healthy throughout the journey. The presentation for this project goes on to a vast amount of detail, such as the crew's living space, the ship's design, and the tech required to run the project, so if you want to read that, we will link it in the description below. So in summary, the project showcases a real-life way of maintaining a crew on a long-distance journey. However, in the terms of Mass Effect Andromeda, we are looking at a really long trip, even with Mass Effect tech. And hibernation, though a very much more viable way than cryostasis, wouldn't stop the aging process. Now probably a very common theory is that the ARCs may utilize Prothean tech to allow for cryostasis as Javik was a prime example of how great their cryogenic tech was. The Protheans resorted to cryogenically freezing large sections of their populations after it became clear they were losing their wars to the Reapers. In large bunkers like seen on Ilos and Eden Prime, cryostasis pods were protected and maintained by VI such as Vigil and Victory. The longevity of their tech is clearly shown as Javik managed to be cryogenically frozen for 50,000 years without being damaged. We also see other examples of cryostasis too, in a minor sense. In modern day Mass Effect, we see Jack being cryogenically held in stasis on Purgatory. That's Jack. So we have a long way to go till we will have real life cryostasis to travel between the stars, though there are promising steps such as several NASA projects including the Spaceworks hibernation technique. But Mass Effect isn't a stranger to cryogenics and the EA Play's 2016 trailer does show Ryder seemingly waking up from some form of sleep, providing significant evidence that we will see it again in Mass Effect Andromeda. So what do you think about the prospect of seeing cryogenic or cryostasis back in Mass Effect Andromeda? And do you think it'll be grounded more in science? Let us know in the comments below. We're also thinking of doing another part of this episode, trying to analyse science behind some of the things we might see in Mass Effect Andromeda. If this is something you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and please share this video to help it grow. And much thanks for sticking around for this probably very long video. We will look forward to seeing you next time.